Uh, thank you, Shuang, and thank you, uh, you and Peter and all the organizers for the, the, the invitation and the opportunity to present this work. This is joint work with um, uh, Costanza Catalano, Maria Castaldo, and Fabio Fagnani, who are all at Politecnico di Torino, and it's a work that fits into this network game uh, uh, literature. Can you see my second slide now? Because my... Are you still on the title? Yeah. Uh, no, where the I'm still on the title on my end. Yeah, yeah, there is something strange because it says that it's posed. Now you can see the second yeah. slide. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think so. We need to keep it this way, I guess, for some mm -hmm. reason that I don't get. Anyway, uh, so this is uh, this is a work uh, motivated by uh, the, the the recent huge interest on network games so um and the interest for centrality measures that is uh, that is throughout network science and engineering i would say so um uh, as you know in many network systems centrality measures play a key role uh, depending on the application they are used to measure the the relative importance of different nodes in a network and they can be used for example to characterize what is the most influential node in, a, in an opinion dynamic system, or they could be used to uh, figure out what is, the, um, what is the node in a financial network that uh, leads to, whose, whose volatility may lead to the biggest impact on the, on the total network. They're also uh, used as a guidance for intervention problem, not just for the analysis. So, uh, you may want to uh, act on the node, which is the most central, in order to achieve uh, a certain uh, control goal, for example. Now, um, the, my talk uh, is more on uh, the aspects related to uh, how can uh, the network be changed in such a way to uh, modify the centrality. And in particular, what happens when uh, many nodes themselves can decide to rewire their links or their outlinks, and in particular in the case, in order to maximize their own centrality, in order to gain as much visibility in the in the network. And the main questions that I'm going to uh, answer, that I'm going to try to uh, address and partly answer, is uh, if we let different players, different nodes take the action consisting in uh, linking to other nodes, what is the, what kind of gain do we get? Is it, um, does it have an equilibrium? Is it, um, is it a potential gain? What, what kind of uh, uh, networks, and also what kind of network structure can we may uh, expect to emerge in, in equilibrium or uh, as a limit of uh, learning process? Now, let me give you a couple of uh, motivation for why uh, this would make sense. Um, so there is, I mentioned that there is a big interest in network games. Those are games where you have nodes that are players and the graph is given in that case. And every player should choose an action and the game is graphical in the sense that the utility of a player depends only on what that player does and the, uh, her neighbors do. So if you the, the most basic the, the, the most fundamental model of a of a network uh, of a network game is one where you have quadratic utilities which look like the ones that I'm showing here if you take player i then uh, player i can choose a, a scalar number xi and the utility associated to player i depends on the choice of xi with terms that depend only on xi itself the first and the second one, the quadratic one. But then there, there are coupling terms that depend on whether um, on, on this uh, neighbors, which are those nodes J, on uh, the action of the nodes J, who uh, are directly linked to I, G, I, J. Now, this is a quadratic game. There is quite a big literature. You can prove that there exists a unique equilibrium under uh, if the spectral radius of the, of the matrix G is, is small enough at least. And this uh, unique equilibrium takes this uh, form. Uh, so it's, it's, um, 
you, you, you can characterize it as a linear function of this coefficients A, where the, 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 the function that shows up involves the network times this parameter beta, which is a rescaling factor. Now, uh, if you want a measure of global of global welfare, what is the weighted, what is the uh, total effort or the weighted effort at the equilibrium, you end up taking the, um, the, 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 the scalar product with a vector of, between a vector of weights and the, and the equilibrium vector. And at the end of the day, what you find out is that your, uh, the, 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 the total effort of the equilibrium, it uh, turns out to be a scalar product between a, a vector pi that is known as the Bonacci or uh, the Bonacci centrality of the network time the, uh, times the um, times this vector a of uh, intrinsic uh, costs that the players have. So in a sense, uh, learning how this centrality vector is shaped, uh, this is going to tell us something about what is the total welfare at equilibrium. And there is a long uh, line of uh, papers that investigate this in, in even more generality. From a different perspective, if we look at the uh, very basic model of opinion dynamics known as the Friedkin-Johnson, here you, you, you assume that players are nodes in a network, every uh, the state of a node, get, which is an opinion, gets updated as a convex combination of the opinions of the neighbors, okay, J here, and there is this interaction matrix Q, which is stochastic, and uh, also of an anchor value, AI, which is sort of the intrinsic opinion of player I, an opinion from which uh, the, the, the player I doesn't want to go too far uh, from. Now, if you do the math, it's, it's a linear system and uh, it's not particularly complicated, but you find that uh, this, this system from any initial condition it will converge to an equilibrium and this equilibrium it's globally asymptotically stable and can be characterized uh, in a way that is reminiscent of what we saw before. So it's a linear function of this uh, intrinsic opinion vectors A. Now, if you are interested in computing, for example, what is the weighted average or simply the weighted uh, or simply the average of the equilibrium opinions, uh, what you end up doing is you're computing the scalar product between the uh, centrality measure, pi, which is very much a special case of the Bonacci centrality before, it's called the page brain centrality, and this vector A. So now you, uh, as you see, there is this, this uh, so in many different problems, you end up having this centrality vector playing a key role. And then uh, the uh, question you may ask is, uh, now, while all this analysis that I was presenting were uh, outcomes of models where the network is given and the centrality measure, it's something that allows you to analyze what the emergent behavior of an opinion dynamics or of a, a quadratic network game is. What if the network is endogenous and, uh, and the, uh, the, the, the nodes themselves try to uh, shape the network in such a way to maximize their own centrality. For example, in the opinion dynamics, it could be that uh, players want to have the largest, each player wants to have the largest possible weight in, the, uh, in determining what the final uh, opinion is at equilibrium. There is, uh, there is a, when you, when you take this approach, uh, since you have many players and since the total centrality is a fixed number, it's one, usually things are normalized in such a way that the total centrality is one, then uh, this, is, uh, this is a game because all players have a different objective and these objectives are competing one with another. And there is, uh, and it's a, a network formation game in the sense that it's a game uh, whose, uh, whose actions determine the formation of a network. And there is a long uh, line of work. So there is a big chunk of literature, at least over the last 25 years, uh, 
on uh, centrality uh, on network formation games and in particular on centrality based network formation games starting from Jackson and Woliski in 98 and uh, over the last 25 years there's been several works now uh, there's two works that are the closest to us this Opcor, uh, Opcroft and Sheldon in uh, 2007 and Community and others in 2022 and those two are the are the closest to us. Uh, the, 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 the characteristic of all this literature is that um, things change a lot depending on uh, on details of the model that you choose. So I will go in to show you exactly what the model, what the, the details are of the model that we choose. And in particular, things depend on which kind of centrality you choose, whether you have a directed or undirected graph. What are the constraints on your action set and, and so on and so forth. So the formulation details matter. And in particular, we're going to focus on page rank, uh, which is a special case of Bonacci centrality, for the reasons that it shows up in several of the problems as I was showing before. So now this is the uh, this is the formalization of the problem that we uh, that we look at. So we have a, a network formation game whereby we have a finite set of players, uh, which I call it V. Those uh, players will be the nodes of a network to be formed. Okay, so we have n nodes. Each node is a player, and each node chooses an action, and the action xi of player i is a set of nodes different from node i itself, to which node i wants to connect directly with the directed link. Okay, and uh, it is important that we are going to fix the cardinality of the uh, set of nodes to which node i is connected to. So for example, if, you're, uh, if the network, it's a citation network, then I write a paper, I am the author of a paper, and I know that my paper has 20 uh, references. And this, I can choose whom to uh, refer to, but the, the number 20 is, is fixed. And this is an important uh, aspect because it would change uh, some of the properties of the game, some, not all. So uh, when uh, every node chooses its own neighbors, we get a vector of actions, uh, we call it a configuration. And since every node is choosing whom to link to, this vector gives rise to a graph, a directed graph, which has node set V and a link set where you have a link IJ if J happens to be in the action of chosen by node I. So if node I decides it's decides to link towards node J, then you get a link IJ. Now, those are the actions. And then uh, to, to, to describe the game, we need to show what is, to, to, to explain what is the utility. And as I said, we are looking at um, cases where uh, nodes want to maximize their centrality and in particular their page rank centrality. So what is the page rank centrality? We take the uh, graph, and the graph itself depends on the action of all the players. This graph, uh, G, uh, this graph, G of X, has an associated stochastic matrix, which is simply the stochastic matrix of the standard random walk of it. So QIJ is 1 over the degree of node I where for all the node J that are um, directly linked from node I, and it's 0 if there is no link from I to J. Now we take this uh, stochastic matrix, we take uh, identity minus beta, which is a fixed parameter between zero and one, times uh, the, 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 um, the transpose of this stochastic matrix Q. We take the inverse of that, we multiply by an intrinsic centrality eta, and what we get is a vector that is the vector of page rank centralities. Um, so what is it that are the data of the problem? Uh, the degree profile, so as I said earlier, we fix the number of outlinks that every node has. And this is going to be called di, and the whole vector is going to be called d. 
We also have another parameter that is this discount factor beta. So the, uh, the higher beta, the closer beta is to one, the more the centrality accounts for the, 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 uh, the impact of the network and the more it rewards the uh, short uh, distance connections. The smaller beta, the closer beta is to zero, and the less the network counts and the more longer uh, paths are also taken into account. Mm -hmm. And then there is this vector eta that is called intrinsic centrality. It's, it's a vector that has entries that are non-negative and we can assume that they are normalized to one. In, uh, it's not very important, the, 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 this eta, and the, one of the results will be that many properties of the game are independent from eta. And if uh, in the applications for, for the standard page rank, for the original Google's page rank, this eta was just the uniform distribution over the nodes. In some other cases, this eta has been investigated as something that is not uniform. We can keep it general at this level. Now, the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the questions we want to address is what kind of game is this? Is there any structure to this game? And uh, what kind of network structures can we expect to emerge if, uh, if we let people play this game over and over? And uh, what kind of game is this? We can uh, say something. If I look at the sum of the pi i's, as I told you, well, this whole matrix that gets here to multiply eta, eta is a, it's a, some one vector, then it's not difficult to see that also pi is a sum vector. So the total centrality, it's equal to one. So it's a constant sum game. Okay, constant sum games are very much related to zero sum games, uh, which is uh, one particular class of games where we know that uh, things can be particularly uh, difficult. It could be that there are several zero-sum games where no pure strategy in Nash equilibrium exists and so on and so forth. However, uh, we have uh, our first result is that there is more structure into that. It's not just that this is a constant sum game, but it's a constant sum game that indeed it admits a uh, potential and it's almost in some sense, an exact potential game. And I'll make this more precise. Where is this coming from? There is, we can, uh, this, this uh, vector pi of the centralities, which depends on the actions of all the players. This is vector x of the action. Uh, this vector pi, it's, um, it's a non-negative vector that sums up to one. So it's a probability distribution, you can think of it. And it's a probability distribution that is the stationary distribution of a random walk uh, or, well, of a, yeah, of a, of a Markov chain with a transition probability matrix P, which is a convex combination between the Q, uh, which is graph dependent, and so it's action dependent, and Q was the standard random walk on the graph emerging from the choices, plus another matrix that has constant rows and that has all the rows equal to eta. So this, uh, this vector of uh, centralities that emerges in, uh, as an outcome of the choices of all neighbor, of all nodes, it's a, a stationary distribution of a certain Markov chain. And uh, it is an irreducible Markov chain, the one that we get, irreducible because this parameter beta is, um, is, is strictly between zero and one. So this part here ensures that, the second part ensures that the matrix is, is irreducible. It is irreducible. And uh, we could use the uh, results for the characterization of um, stationary distributions of irreducible stochastic matrix, in particular, the Markov chain three theorem, which says the following. If you take any node i and you look at what are called the directed, the spanning directed rooted trees in node i, uh, which you can see in, uh, in the picture up here. So you have to look at all possible uh, with four nodes, those are all the possible uh, directed rooted trees rooted in I, and they're also called arborescences. 
uh, sanitary nai. So they are uh, graphs where node i is the only sink and all the other nodes have out degree one and they point in such a way that uh, i is reachable from all the other nodes. Now, uh, what you can do is that um, you can, according to this theorem, you can look at all the uh, arborescences or all these directly expanding rooting trees sent, um, rooted in i and you can compute something that I'm calling an I here. This is the sum over all these directed rooted trees of the product of the entries of the matrix P uh, that you encounter along the links of this directed rooted trees. And you can prove that the stationary distribution of a Markov chain is proportional to this term N I. Uh, how do you get the proportionality? constant, of course, you make sure that the sum of all the pi i's is equal to one. So this, this z factor that appears in the denominator is nothing but the sum over j over the n j. Okay, why uh, is that so important? Of course, this is a characterization, computationally speaking, it's not particularly um, useful because there is a larger than exponential number of this uh, spanning rooted trees. And, uh, however, uh, this is important because what you can observe is that when you look at any uh, rooted, any expanding rooted tree rooted in I, as you see uh, from the picture, the, uh, the, there is no link that is outgoing from I that appears in this expanding directed rooted I. So the out degree of I in any expanding directed rooted I, it's zero. So what happens is that the numerator of this formula, which is the sum of all this, um, the sum of all this, this product, the sum of all these products, doesn't depend on what node i chooses. Doesn't depend on the outlinks of node i, which are the ones that node i can determine. And as such, uh, it's a, a term that we would call in uh, in game theoretic terms is um, uh, is um, it, it, it's um, it's non strategic, so it doesn't depend on the choice of node i. And i, the numerator, depends only on the choices of everyone except for i. So this suggests something on the structure of the game. Pi i is what node i wants to maximize. Pi i is the ratio between two things. One thing that depends on I, that is i specific, but doesn't depend on what node i chooses. And so node i cannot do anything about the numerator, but what node i can do is to uh, decrease the denominator, decrease since uh, node i wants to maximize the centrality, that is the ratio between an i and z. Now, this is, uh, this is uh, important, and also it's, you can uh, get several consequences out of this. And uh, what you can get is, for example, that uh, if you uh, take the uh, minus the logarithm of z, then this is an ordinal potential for the game. And in fact, you can be even more precise. If you look not at the game where the utilities are pi i, but at the game where the utilities are the logarithm of pi i, then if you take the logarithm of a ratio that becomes the difference of two terms, log of an i minus log of z, but log of an i doesn't depend on what player i does, and the other part is log of z, but this z is the same for all players. And what you get is that uh, the uh, this game with the log uh, with the log utilities, if you want, it's an exact potential game. So that has a lot of consequences. So you have a finite game. It's true. This is a it's it's a constant sum game, but it's an ordinal potential game. So it admits always pure strategy in equilibria. Not only that, but you also saw that any uh, asynchronous best response dynamics is going to converge to a subset of what are called recurrent Nash equilibria, those Nash equilibria uh, from, uh, from which you don't, uh, you, you, you cannot escape. And also, you know more, since uh, it's not just an ordinary, ordinary potential game, but it's uh, basically the log of an exact potential game. Uh, you also know that other dynamics, what is called, for example, log linear learning or noisy best response, depending on uh, the, the terminology that you want to adopt, 
Then this log linear learning where um, players are selected at random and they revise their action by putting an exponentially large probability on their best response and then smaller and smaller probabilities on their um, on this on the other options, then this one becomes a reversible Markov chain with a stationary distribution that, uh, that it's proportional to a power of the inverse of uh, Z. So this term Z, which is the sum of the NI, it's um, minus this term or minus the log of this term, it's a potential. And so uh, it's very important, for example, to characterize this, what are the maximum points of the, the potential that are always Nash equilibria. And um, and this this potential along all uh, along, for example, the best response dynamics serves as a Lyapunov function. Now, computing this uh, potential is not the, uh, the thing that you really want to do because, as I said, it's larger than exponential the number of TI. So doing it naively, it's it's out of question. However, from analysis purposes, you can still get some information. For example, uh, since you have a um, an ordinal potential gain, uh, then uh, you know from, from theory that uh, maximum points of this uh, potential correspond certainly to Nash equilibria. They are a subset of Nash equilibria. So you can ask what happens to the maximum points of this Nash equilibria. And uh, remember, we have a parameter beta, that is this discount factor. Beta is the how much you weigh the network. And so the closer beta to one, the more <clears throat> you are, um, you are uh, taking into account the, the network effects and the short uh, connections within it. So if you take the limit as beta goes to one, then you can characterize uh, the behavior of the terms that appear here, and in particular of the, the potential. Um, remember, z is the, the potential is minus log of z. So minimizing z corresponds to maximizing the potential. And uh, you can see, for example, that the, um, the, 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 the limit as beta goes to 1 this term and i uh, behaves like a power one of minus beta uh, to something that depends on the number of nodes for which node i is reachable. And as a consequence, you get, for example, that the uh, minimizers of z, which are the maximizers of the potential, are those directed graph that minimize the max for overall the maximum overall nodes of the number of uh, nodes from which that particular node i is reachable okay this is a mouthful to to explain but for example if you have um if you have uh, homogeneous out degrees meaning that all the nodes have degree k minus one and if the number of nodes it's a multiple of this term k then you can prove that the maximizers of the potential are, uh, are exactly like shown in the picture down here. So they are done by a number of clusters of fully connected clusters that are completely disjoint one from another. You can also generalize this, what happens when this is not a multiple and you get that you get something similar to this. So one first result is this one, the one that I was trying to uh, tell you. So this is a potential gain. And as I said, it's an ordinal potential. But if you take the log of utilities, then it makes some an exact potential. And uh, I mentioned that accounting for this uh, potential, or computing this potential, it's a global computation. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, typically hard. but the second result that I want to tell you about is that the best response of this game has a nice structure. In some sense, it's a it's a distributed it has a distributed feature. So, uh, in principle, remember we are looking at the game where every player should uh, look at all possible neighbors. Uh, uh, so I told the possible nodes and should decide whom to attach to. 
and uh, that means that in principle, when a node is asked to do, has to compute its best response, should look at the whole graph formed by the decisions of all the other nodes in order to make its own decision. Now, this uh, theorem says, uh, first of all, the best response set doesn't depend on eta. Eta was this intrinsic centrality vector that I was mentioning earlier. And then uh, the points two and three are the most interesting, in particular the uh, point three here. And uh, we're going to parse them with a, with a picture. So the second point especially says, well, if, you're, uh, if the number of uh, nodes and i minus infinity stands for the number of nodes from which node i is reachable in the, in the graph. If the number of nodes from which u node i are reachable is less than your out degree, then your best response will be uh, in the following way, the i. It will be in the following way. You choose, uh, you make sure that you're gonna link to all those that uh, from which you are reachable, and then you can choose anyone else. So your best response is gonna be any set of di nodes that includes the set of nodes from which you originate. And this is sort of an extreme case, but the uh, more interesting case is when you are reachable from a number of nodes that is larger than your degree. Then point three comes into the picture and it tells you the following. Now you have to choose whom to link your DI nodes, uh, whom to link your DI links to. And to do so, you of course look at all graphs. So you look at the picture down here. So what happens is that you could uh, decide, you look at the graph around you and you start looking at what is your in neighborhood. So what are the nodes that are directly pointing towards you? And this uh, theorem point three tells you, well, you definitely should pick up one of this in neighbors. Then in the second step, you want to choose your second uh, node to link to. And the second note, what the theorem says, is that it's going to belong either to the rest of your neighborhood, those two nodes that you didn't consider earlier, or it must be any neighbor of the node that you've chosen in the first stage. And then uh, maybe you choose this second node here, which I'm coloring black. And then when you choose your third uh, node you want to link to, you should look at the nodes you were considering before and you haven't chosen so far as well as on the nodes that are pointing directly to the last node that you choose. So now we have this four, uh, these four nodes, and uh, when you decide to link to this one, although this one was not a uh, one that was directly pointing to you, and things go on in this way. And in the end, with this process in this specific example, you end up with this four nodes. Now, what are the implications here? So what the formally, what it says is that if uh, the configuration determined by the choices of all the other players is such that U not I are reachable from uh, a number of nodes that is larger or equal to DI, then uh, from any, uh, for every best response, uh, your best response should be such that you, uh, if a node is in your response, then there should be a path in your best response, then there should be a path starting from that node and going through uh, other nodes that are in the best response that leads to you. So definitely you should include one in neighbor and then someone that is in the neighbor of any neighbor and potentially so on. That gives a local flavor to your best response. The, the, the game is complicated, things is gonna be utility, is gonna depend on the choices of everyone, which scales terribly with the number of nodes. But if uh, you have to choose your best response, then it's sufficient to proceed the way I told you, and that reduces the complexity a lot, especially if uh, you don't have a large number of uh, links to uh, to put and or not so many are putting. Where is this coming from? Where is this result coming from? Um, like the first result that we're using a Markov chain uh, representation of the problem, 
This is also using a Markov chain representation. So we learned that the uh, pi, it's the Schirchner probability of a certain Markov chain. Uh, we already use the Markov chain tree theorem, but now we're gonna use another representation in terms of the so-called expected heating times. So once again, you have a discrete time Markov chain on the set of nodes and you're moving and the Markov chain, the probability to go from I to J is this PIJ. And this PIJ is a combination between the uh, normalized matrix of the graph and this, this risk star associated to the intrinsic centrality. Now, uh, you want to look at the expected eating times and the expected return times. The expected return time is the time it takes on average for you to come back uh, from to node i when you start in node i. And by Katz formula, this is known to be equal to the inverse of the stationary distribution of, so the inverse of your centrality. So simple result is that the inverse of your centrality is the, uh, the expected time it takes to return in node i when you start in node i. But now if you're in node i and you want to know how long it takes on the average to return in node i, well, this is going to take one time to make the first move. And then you can condition on the first move. And the first move, if you start in node i, will be moving to j with probability pij. And when you condition, then you look at the time it takes from this node j that is that you've chosen in the first step to go back to i. So this tau ij, this is the expected time it takes to go from i when you start in node j. So with this simple formula, you have reduced the, um, the, 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 the centrality, or better, the inverse of the centrality to a linear combination of the expected eating times uh, in node i itself. Now, like before, there is an important observation. What happens is that the time it takes to, from, to go from node j to node i doesn't depend on the outlinks of node i. It depends on the outlinks of node j, on the outlinks of all the other nodes, but not on node i, because the outlinks of node i are going to count only when your random walk arrives in node i, but by that time, you have already computed your expected eating time. So this is an important observation because, as you see, you can uh, you, you can look at the game and then the inverse of the utility is going to be a linear combination where uh, you have into, into the picture, you get the expected eating times that do not depend on your choice, you player i, uh, but times certain coefficients, this pij, and those are what node i controls to. So it's easy to see what the best response of node i is. You have to choose the di nodes which have the minimum eating time on you. And, and uh, basically, this is the key to, to the proof of the previous theorem. And then, of course, how do you compute the CT times? Well, they, they are a solution of a linear equation, and this you could use, for example, in the, in the application, in, in, the, in, the, in the simulations. Good. Uh, so the expected eating times, uh, you can prove a few things. They do not depend on the choice of node i, the expected eating times in i. They do depend on this parameter eta, but they do not uh, but the ranking doesn't depend on this um, uh, this uh, intrinsic centrality eta, which was one parameter. And then uh, by choosing one particular eta, you get something that allows you to express the locality of this response. So the utility depends on uh, on everything, but the, uh, the sort of deciding what is the best action, it's a, it's a local decision that you can take on the net. So this is the first set of results. And then as a consequence of this set of results, we can say something on the structure of the emerging uh, networks that we could uh, expect. And these results tell us that, for example, the all Nash equilibria are independent from eta. And uh, roughly speaking, this Nash equilibria tend to be uh, very, um, clustered, very clustered and very disconnected. 
In particular, you can prove that every connected component of a Nash equilibrium is a sink or a source. If your Nash equilibrium is recursive, then at most one source, uh, then you have at most one source connected component. And if you have a straight Nash equilibrium, that is a Nash equilibrium for which you don't get out at all, if, then all the connected components are very isolated. And you can also prove, for example, that Nash equilibria do contain a lot of um, length two circuits, that is undirected links, and a lot of triangles, three cycles, and so on and so forth. Besides that, you can also do characterizations of uh, what classification of what Nash equilibrium look like in uh, homogeneous cases. So for example, where all nodes have uh, out degree two, we have a complete characterization of what this Nash equilibrium look like. And indeed, we have some results also in the general case of homogeneous, um, homogeneous network with all the nodes at degree K, then we can prove something about the uh, number of clusters that emerge and um, properties of, of the graph themselves. But let me um, wrap up. So uh, what I was showing you uh, is a, uh, a strategic form game that is a centrality maximization network formation game. The nodes are, uh, the, are the decision makers. They choose whom to link to in order to maximize their centrality in the, uh, in the network that emerges. And uh, regarding the structure of the game, it's, um, it's an interesting, it is an interesting structure because it is a constant sum game. At the same time, it's an ordinal potential and it's really much even more than an ordinal potential. It's the, if you take the log, then you get an exact potential game. Okay, that's interesting because uh, from other perspective, zero sum games and potential games are sort of assumed in the two orthogonal components of games. But here we are in a, in a nice combination of the two. Uh, the second result was a result uh, on uh, locality of the best response, meaning that uh, your utility depends on what everyone else is doing and what you do, of course. But your best response is something that uh, scales well. You only have to look at a number of uh, nodes uh, of a short part of the graph, and you can do that iteratively. You can start looking at your in neighbors and then the in neighbors of your in neighbors. In the worst case, this scales uh, anyway well with, with the number of nodes. And you can use these results to uh, prove something on uh, what uh, kind of structure you observe in the set of Nash equilibria. And uh, in some cases, you can get a full characterization, like in the case where uh, the, 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 the graph is regular. And uh, one, uh, but for some cases, you you can really list as we as we did all the all the papers. Um, if you want to summarize, what is it that you get is that you get networks that tend to be very fragmented. You get this clusterization. You people tend to group, and the denotes tend to group. And typically, your network it has a lot of strongly connected components, and they are not very linked to each other. You can do even more, and you can see if you have a um, if you have uh, a few nodes with a high degree. Well, they tend to serve as hubs, and they tend to connect to different connected components. So, if there are nodes with a um, if you, there are there is heterogeneity in the degree, then you tend to uh, see less clusters because these these hubs tend to uh, tend to uh, in involve um, better connection. And I think that was uh, what I wanted to say. Um, there is current work that we are doing. Um, one, uh, one direction is to look at uh, different, um, different uh, network progression games where centrality is not the only factor, but is one factor. 
And in particular, we're looking what happens if you want to minimize the variance of, of, of the final uh, consensus that you get. You want to be accurate, then, and then you get a very different sort of uh, outcome. And also we are looking at uh, network interventions from a centralized perspective. What would you do if you are a central planner and you want to change slightly the network in order to have an impact on the centrality? But uh, thanks for your attention and uh, happy to get any questions. <laughs>